Right now I've said we'd do something a lot simpler and this is what it is. If you're practicing the figures and you get some poses that you like then it's always handy to come back to them for future reference if you know that they're locked away for good in a pad and they're not going to get lost providing you don't lose the pad. Now you can see having used that head as a measurement for the whole figure how that it looks in proportion already even though it's only a circle and a triangle and you can see down the left hand side with those marks were spot on for the seven and a half heads high and we'll turn it into a man and we'll, we'll dress him in a suit just to start with very very simple we'll uh, if we're going to give him a suit we better give him a collar and tie so we'll leave that sort of little v there like that there's the start of his uh, trousers I'm just going to take the shoulder slightly above the triangle. Don't forget the triangle is only a guide. It's not an absolute measurement that we have to follow. And you can see I've pulled the triangle here. I've done this little extra bit here just to give a hint of his back leg as if this one is slightly pointing forward as if he's walking casually towards us. I'll just put a hint of the, the hands in here. Hands and feet incidentally are invariably bigger than people draw them to start with which is why I find generally that it's best not to paint feet because if you paint feet on a figure first of all the feet if you draw them or paint them the proper size look far too big and the main thing is that they draw attention to themselves and away from the main part of the picture. Right now you don't have to worry about getting the shadow too detailed or too accurate the main thing is that it melts into the bottom of the picture and the eye reads that as correct. It, the eye of the viewer then doesn't worry that there's no feet actually painted. The assumption is that somewhere the feet are hidden in the shadow. And this time we'll do a lady and we'll have her walking away from us. And we'll paint, I don't know. We'll, I know, we'll, we'll give her a nice warm yellow sleeveless top like that take that down roughly to the uh, make that a bit a uh, bit brighter there take that down roughly to the halfway point and we'll give it a nice perhaps a nice bright blue skirt make it a pencil skirt this time and I'm deliberately letting that uh, touch together with the yellow there's a reason for that, I'll explain in a moment. We'll just add the, the back of her stockings there. Now that's wrong, that doesn't matter. We can always take that out if it runs too much. No problem. We'll have her carrying a couple of bags. Let's say she's been shopping. So there's a hint there of, uh, of a bag or something like that. But again, you can see how easy that is to create a believable figure. Right, now you can see how freely I've painted this figure. And certainly the bags and the leg. And, and as well, you can see the way the colour has melted together. So this blue has run up into the yellow and then down into to the legs. And actually, rather than that being a mistake and spoiling things, it actually enhances the figure because it helps to blend all the different component parts of the figure together and we want this guy facing forwards well okay he's coming along here and this perhaps rather attractive woman has caught his eye so his head is turned to the left notice i've not made any attempt to draw any features in the face the direction of the face is determined entirely by the way the hair has gone on the head now you can see I'm just going to add a little bit of water just to blend that shadow in a little bit better. That's fine. And that gives us a very believable and very simple uh, landscape figure that you can use dozens of times in dozens of different locations. He doesn't have to have a suit on. It could be a shirt, a t-shirt. This could be jeans or it could be shorts. Let's have a look at the lady now. And this time we'll have her hair painted like that and by doing that slightly longer like that well by painting the hair over the back of the head and leaving that gap below for the neck you can see instantly that the figure is walking away melt that shadow in a little bit more and what we'll also do is put some shading 
on the bags on this side. Right, now that you've got the idea of the principle of the triangles, I'm just going to take that top corner out. Start off with a shirt like that. It could be a t-shirt. We'll take it up to there. And we're going to leave some light flex, and that's quite useful because it gives the impression of light catching the folds of the shirt. Right, now you can see with this permanent rose we've used for mum's dress, this makes this group of figures automatically a focal point in your picture. So bear that in mind when choosing your colours. Again, the same principle, he's walking along and the, the leg, or the back leg, is just slightly behind. You can see the way it sort of finishes. You can see the way the front leg, or what will be the front leg, comes across the front. It's, it's implied more than actually painted. You can see that the back leg is implied that it's sort of behind there. It'll become clear when we actually just do some highlights. Right, now let's paint Junior in an orangey sort of uh, top here like that. Now you can see again just by drawing that triangle it's running together a bit but you can see he wants to be off. He doesn't want to be with mum and dad, he wants to be over there somewhere. I'm going to do the dad's face there, perhaps slightly smaller than I've done it, as I said I don't want it too big and I'll bring it down here so he's perhaps got an open neck shirt on and she's sort of standing still, no you're not going, where are you off? And Dad's sort of there in a sort of supporting role, but he doesn't really want to get involved. Mum is looking down at her little lad and says, Sorry, darling, you're not going over there. And the way we get her looking down at her little lad is by positioning the hair so. But you can see that we've got that sort of, without any real difficulty, just by leaning the triangles over, we've got a, a little bit of animation. Instead of somebody just walking along now, we've got a little bit of interest. The viewer's thinking, well, I wonder what he's after. What is he doing? What's he pulling away? What's interesting him over here? Right, now I've just tidied up Mum's hairstyle and just added a couple of shadows here and there. Just strengthen the shadow. See the way the legs literally of the junior literally now run straight into the shadow. And that works because with the shadows being blended together, it helps to bring the family group together. It pulls everything together. Not only are the figures all joined up, but with the shadows being joined up to each other as well, it creates a nice sense of unity.